exactly the same from splits gone by three bands followed by three picks for each team and then things will get a little crazy as we get into phase two yes indeed so the first one that we take off the board is jace banned by origin on their side it has been starting to show up quite a lot more on the 7.1 patch. But it's not exactly one that I would expect to come right out of the gates. Uh, champions across the world that have been banned out specifically or picked in every single game. Zyra, Rengar, Camille, Maokai, and Ryze are all 100% in LPL and LCK pick or ban. I expect to see at least four of them in this first phase of bans. Two of them, well, one has gone already. Boom. LeBlanc also has a very high pick ban ratio right now. Yeah, and Camille makes a whole lot of sense as well. I mean, it's a very, very powerful champion right now that everyone has been trying to get their hands on. But it's on blue side Camille ban right now. I would have expected Origin if they were prepared to take it out of the top or jungle to have left it available for themselves. And with now another jungle hit coming out from this Rengar, Wisdom has to start digging a little deeper into his champion pool. Well, we'll see if he can definitely stack up. I think it's an interesting point you talk about with Camille on the side of Origin because it does seem to be a champion that is a little bit I want to say out of character for Satorius since he made his name on these like top AP tanky champions. Absolutely. I don't really expect to see Satorius taking a duelist matchup and from the top lane to the mid lane, Cassiopeia, another pick that is seeing high prominence around the world. We've seen a lot of Syndra coming out as well. So Origin are setting themselves up perhaps to pick Rise first as their first pick and not have too many answers left available in that mid lane. Oriana would be the one that H2K would probably want to pull against it. Ah, but we have the Katarina ban, so the Syndra will get left up and so will the Rise. Curious to see if Origin wants to opt for their mid lane early on in this pick and ban phase. It could very well be the case, and it's one of the champions we have seen Nahum play. And at this point, we look over to the other side. Jungle, top lane, all have prominence, as does the support. Lee Sin would be a pick for Yankos. We have seen time and a time again. If he wants to force Wisdom out of his comfort zone, an early and uncharacteristic Rek'Sai would be available, because that's likely what Wisdom will default to. We've seen it time and time again in Challenger. That is his go-to pick when it is available. Available. Yeah, interesting. I don't think... Oh, wait a minute! He's going to it's just locked. lock to Kha'Zix with Lee Sin up, with Elise up. This is something special from H2K. We've seen Kha'Zix a couple of times already on 7.1. It's as carry champion as you can get out of the jungle. And the Lee Sin matchup, if Wisdom wants it, is okay against Kha'Zix. We have seen it go both ways in the last few days. But as for this second pick now on the rotation from H2K, I'm wondering where do they look at now? Do they flex a Karma? Do they pick up something that they can put in multiple positions? Ah, well, they will take hmm. the Varus. I mean, that is technically your flex pick, even though we are more likely to see it in that AD carry position. So that's locked in, potentially for nuclear, and the picks are back to origin. Yeah, we saw a, a couple of Varus games out in some of the series in LCK as well. Obviously, we've only got two days of play to go from. Did see it in that AD carry roll. A couple of good catches in the KT series from the other day. All right, so there is the Rek side that we're predicting here. And the Ash, another high-tier AD carry locked in for tabs. So they're building themselves you know, what appears to be a fairly solid front line, and they have a lot of engage on the side of Origin. How is H2K going to answer this? Well, H2K right now have the pick of the litter as we round out phase one of the draft. We've seen a couple of crazy things come out from the support. The Malzaha hover will kind of tell you a lot that it is at least in the minds of the players, but it's mid lane we go as we head into the new phase of the draft. Phase two has begun of the band phase. Now each team will have two further bands before we finish out the draft. Yep, you can think about it like the old pick and band phase, but you have to slice it open, stick a couple more bands in there, and it's like a pick band sandwich. Now this Syndra pick, obviously going into the rise is an okay pick, will have the ability to snowball. And you can see there already prominence down into that bottom lane support role. It's one of the roles that is still available for H2K. Here come the target bands, and this would indicate a Zyra pickup coming out from Che. With the Misfortune off the table, that's one of the picks that does very well at punishing picks like Ash, who have that fairly short range. Zyra can harass her down. Also counts as a takeaway too, the Ash Zyra lane has been one of the more impressive ones we've seen in recent times. And they won't have the chance to pick it. Do you think this is something that Origin themselves will now ban away? If they don't, I would be incredibly surprised. Uh, they are focusing the top side of the map, though, with that rumble. Don't want Odoamne having his hands on that from before. But Odoamne has a lot of options still available. The Poppy is up. The Maokai is still available as well. Yeah, I think for Odo, this is going to be a fantastic season. I'm not just pulling that out of the fact that he's been one of the most consistent top laners we've had in EU. I, there's so many things he can play up in that top lane that we've seen continuing from Worlds all the way on. So Kennen's banned away, that's something else Origin don't want to have to deal with. 
but that's, you know, a, a top lane pick that we haven't really seen too much of recently. I mean, people have been trying it a couple of other areas on the map, but I don't know whether you're that much more afraid of Odo Amne's cannon than you should be of Chase Zyra if he ends up picking it up here. Red side get the first pick in pick phase two as well here and we'll have the last pick of the draft. There is the Zyra, and in my opinion, that is a real, you know, bad kind of setup from Origin to ban out the Kennen and leave the Zyra available. It's so strong in that bottom lane. Yeah, it's been pretty consistently pick banned in the games we've seen on 7.1. And Che is a very reliable player. This is a super pokey bottom lane, and Tabs and Heva are going to have to watch their backs. There's a Maokai locked in for Satorius, so something we definitely could have predicted there. And of course, it will go back to Omni for the final. After this last pickup, we are still waiting on support. And Heva is one of the most aggressive supports we've had in European Challenger. Alistair, Thresh, supports that will try and get a fight started are exactly what he likes. His bread and butter was when, when, when Annie was such a big playmaker, but he's departing that completely. And now that either tells you Origin have somebody else to really call the shots and look for starting engagements, or he was just playing out of his comfort zone. Quite possibly, but maybe he's been practicing a little in the offseason, trying to get for those mo more pokey supports that he can play back a little bit. Ash Karma is still a very powerful lane. This Shen, though, I would love this from Omni. It gets him in to fights and into engagements a lot easier than just that teleport alone. It's also a lane that is easily played into the Maokai as well. I mean, Maokai is not really going to pressure out the Shen at all. Shen it. should be able to sit there fairly comfortably and look at the assassination potential that H2K have across the board. The Syndra, you've got the Kha'Zix to set it up as well, and you've got Shen to compensate for some of the squishiness, perhaps, that they'll have out of that jungle. So high damage coming out of H2K, whereas Origin, lower damage to begin this game. They're running for a later game composition with the Maokai, with the Rise, the same can be said from their bot lane as well. Good utility, great utility to get a fight started. But if H2K start getting ahead in this, if Forbidden gets kills, if Yankos gets kills, this game could get out of hand for Origin very quickly. It could indeed. H2K can play very aggressive with the comp they build for themselves, and Origin certainly have to watch their backs as we take down the final timer, setting those summoners up and everything. And it's been a while for both of them. For some of these players that haven't gotten too many chances to play on the LCS stage too, this has got to be a massive moment for them. Huge chip on the shoulder of Origin for an organizational standpoint as the coaches shake hands, walking off stage. Oh, it's going to be big. Oh yeah, this is going to be a good game. I, I do wonder now, coming out of ban phase two, how integral is that Zyra going to be? Because not many teams have let Zyra go all that way through the draft, very through surprising. ban phase two. So yeah. we'll have to see whether pushing Odo Amne onto something like a Shen is enough, or whether it uh, you know, is too big of a mountain for Origin to climb above. Yeah, I mean, he's definitely not going to be the most uh, aggressive in lane unless he lands the taunt into the minions, but Maokai can deal with that just fine. We're going to focus so much on the bottom lane. We're going to focus on that mid. We're going to focus on the entire map, I think. And it sounds like everyone's pretty excited in the audience here. We're loading up onto the rift for game number one of the European LCS Spring Split. And don't forget, you guys, online, keep your Twitters handy, because if you think Origin can take number one, well, go ahead and hop on. At OL Esports is the place. Hashtag OG winner of H2K is going to do it. Hashtag H2 what? H2K win is what you want to hashtag for that one. As we are on the rift, first best of three of the European LCS. First time we're loading up for 2017 here as well. I'm ready. So are Origin, because they're They've trying to find be. Che to begin this game out. Maybe looking for nuclear as well. Oh, boy. Oh, They're going to spot it. They've been spotted. Che like, knows exactly yeah. what's up right now. It was a nice try from Origin. But the cheese has been revealed. It gives away now information on the top side of the map as well, because Yankos, they know they can go into the top side, get wards down, spot out the early jungle start. I'm not expecting Origin to pull anything particularly tricky, but it's Yankos that maybe wants to do it for himself. He's waiting for somebody to cross through here. Odo Amne hasn't skilled yet in case he just ends up taking taunt from this, catches Wisdom or uh, potentially Nahian coming into the lane. They're bringing three themselves. This could turn into an ugly level one we, if they want it. We also saw, ooh, hang on, Wisdom. Nahun's going to walk Nahun. right into it. He has to burn his flash. Instant exhaust onto Yankos. They turn their attention to Wisdom, and in comes Febivin. Dark Sphere means the rest of Origin will not want to take that fight, and it ends up being a couple of summoners blown. 
from Jankos, Origins mid lane. Jankos doesn't know he was on a ward there. It was placed around about the time the whole skirmish started happening. So Jankos is denying uh, the blue take from Wisdom to try and get as much as he can from this setting because Jankos was so far behind that his early clear would have been a little bit difficult. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting start to this game, too, with both junglers being set behind. Oduwamne and Satorius moving up towards the top side to take their places. Everything else as expected in the mid and on the bottom. Let's take a look at our summoners, our keystones, I should say, rather. <laughs> a lot of tankiness on that side of Origin. No surprise Let's that the when you've too, got you the, uh, the tanky style that Origin want to play, bringing two Courage of the Colossus to the game, and then Kha'Zix brings Thunderlords. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. No, no, Just you want to do all the you. damage. Uh, gone are the days of uh, Strength of the Ages and... Every jungler taking it. Yeah, exactly. But as we look on this bottom lane, a lot of people talking about Nuclear and Che and now Tabs and Heaver. How are they going to match up against each other? As Yankos is very low. If they were in Invade, perhaps... Uh, oh, they're picking him too. Got it. Yeah, they know he's seemingly quite low. They're expecting him to be there, but shouldn't be too detrimental. I'm expecting Nuclear and Che to be able to hold their own and go even against every bot lane that we've got and win some of the, the matchups they have against the bottom tier teams. Very easy, very comfortable. Yeah. Uh, on Origin's side, Tabs and Heva, I mean, you, you look at this pair on paper and they're definitely... Not lacking too much for experience, Heva having been in the challenger scene for a long, long time. And even if he has the tendency to be one of the more blindly aggressive supports, he still can get results done. Tabs has had a pedigree, but we just haven't seen much out of him lately. And, you know, they kind of have to step up and prove that they still can play. Yeah, I mean, Tabs, we saw him in challenger for a while and honestly was kind of struggling even to maintain a top challenger AD carry status. He had a lot of good games, but you know, when you started seeing players like Hans Sama come in, though everybody was making a lot of noise about it. Tabs seemingly started get to get left behind and we'll see if he gets left behind on this because he's actually running up all the way towards the Ankos now. I think yep. uh, I think H2K kind of have an inkling it's happening when the whole bot lane disappears. You kind of have to wonder. Yeah, Wisdom's coming too here. I mean, that was all because of the ward that Yanko placed knows. early on. Yankos knows he's going to get the smite down. So they really can't get much done and just, in fact, lose out a little bit of lane presence here. Wisdom is going to get a Skull of Crab clear on down towards the bottom side, but a lot of jungler focus has been in this lane right now. And it's a curious thing to see if that continues. A good amount of help from Heaver as well, warding in the lower side jungle so they knew exactly where Yankos was. They could have predicted it pretty much from his pathing. Anyway, Yankos now, they know where Wisdom is. He will get spotted out on some of this vision here and Wisdom may be looking to turn, but Che has got him boxed in. Oh boy, ooh, it avoids the grasping roots. Takes a pot shot on the back half and they place the ward not quite in the brush, but Wisdom sneaks out with his life. A lot of near misses to start this game off. We're only four and a half in. <laughs> yeah, we are only four and a half in. Uh, you know, we've seen Nathan already back away from that mid lane, pick himself up, himself up a tier of the goddess as well, which kind of forced Febovan to back away and get himself lost chapter. Pick up a control ward for some extra vision control. Satorius, he's on Maokai. This is a comfortable one for him. He's able to teleport back up to the top. Yeah, no problem for Satorius. There's another player that is, uh, you know, coming in and having his LCS start, but we'll talk about that a little bit later as Wisdom is on the gank path. They can't get any CC locked down, so Nuclear and Che have backed off to safety once again. Flash for flash in the bot lane. Heaver flashed on Che, which forced him to flash in response, otherwise it would have locked him down. It's pretty flashy. So, uh, yeah. uh, a little bit more emphasis on the bottom lane than I think H2K would have liked right now, but when you look at it, it's two tanks in the top lane. It's Syndra and Ryze in the mid lane, who, until Syndra hits six, isn't really going to be able to do too much against Ryze, and even then he's Ryze, so kind of survives most things yeah. as well. H2K would like to divert attention a little further away from that bot lane for now, though. Ooh, Satorius is going to get the ward on. Spawn, spot Yankos up towards top side. That's a question we had to ask ourselves quite a lot coming into uh, this week, prepping for it all. Where was H2K going to focus their jungle attention? With Febivin now occupying the mid lane, a uh, role that you know, previous mid laner Ryu had a lot of attention out of him. Would that translate to Oduwamne, or would that instead be transferred down towards bottom? So far, it has seemed well, to be the bot, not by their own choice. Exactly. This game is very matchup specific as well. Not a lot you can do for Shen Maokai in the top lane for a while. No, in fact, Shen comes to you. <laughs> well, yeah, Shen can come to you, and he can now as well. Oduwamne just hit six. Important timing from Satorius using his TP into the lane allows Oduwamne to use his in response and have Stand United available. This might be the opportunity that HGK over the next minute or so have to really blow this game wide open. If everybody comes down to the bottom lane again, Shen will be able to get there, Maokai won't. Yeah, level six, uh, very important when you're dealing with the Shen, and obviously ultimates are pretty impactful for most champions in the game. Nonetheless, uh, it's a big deal. Satorius is still sitting on five, of course, even if he could teleport into the action. 
You can see the bot lanes backing away down bottom, and Yankos is actually going to go a roaming. And look at this. This is because Nation backed away. This is his second recall already from mid lane. Allows Yankos to move into the enemy jungle, clear out a control ward. He sees that Wisdom is now very low, and Yankos, only level four, does have a disadvantage, but knows that at least for the first portion of that, Febivan would have been able to roam and get there quicker than Nation will. That level one ult is still fairly low range on Rise, so didn't want to get caught out in a situation where he had to try and save Wisdom. Mm -hmm. Nahum definitely having a lot to prove here. This is a guy we've only huh. seen in Korean Challenger, and you know he didn't manage to win a game. Excuse me, LSPL. This is interesting. Nuclear and Che coming all the way across from bottom lane, diverting their attention through. Normally, you just see them come back down through the lane. The wave is kind of pushing away from them, and Tabs is pushing it back out. So maybe they were looking to see if they could make a play, catch somebody out in the jungle, but nobody was there. There's been a huge <laughs> focus on getting early vision in like, oh, the audience. It's blasting time. As they pop over. Oh boy, Tabs. Tabs and Heva. They don't see this. Does he know? Oh, if Heva goes to war, this will be so bad. And they lock they him down. Him, locked him in. Goes Yankos. Heva is down. First blood for the first blood king. Oh, that couldn't have gone much better for H2K. The three-man blasting plant acrobatics show over the wall into the first blood. And Yankos continues his moniker of being the first blood king. This guy truly is unstoppable when you start looking at these early game skirmishes. You can see last season, 40 first bloods he participated in. Insane. Yeah, this guy is something else. And now you can see why they prioritize the Kha'Zix pickup over something like Elise Sin. Already starting off to an excellent one for it. Let's take this one more time. Just take it in. Olympic gold goes to H2K on the trio gymnastics. And Heva doesn't really get too much in just the, the way just of the any edge. help from the judges. I mean, that just feels bad, man. Uh, unfortunately, still didn't have his flash up and available. The exhaust, he knew he was dead. Not much you can do there, so. Yankos is able to pick himself up his first kill of the game. Let's check in how the CS is going, though. Because in this bottom lane, it actually has been Tabs outdoing nuclear in that regard. You can shoot a few more arrows at once. Everything else has been fairly even. I mean, the jungle looked like it was going to be a bit rough of a start for Yankos, but obviously he's made up quite a lot for that. And uh, H2K, you know, they have a slim lead thanks to that first blood, but it's only about 300 gold, so in nine minutes, doesn't mean too much. It's about as good as you're going to get without a, a significant fight in the bottom side. Just the one catch, really well worked by H2K. Um, a little bit fortunate on their side, knowing that Heva, after his recall, is going to come out to the, the river and ward it. I mean, that's not a play that is going to work every time that you three-man blast plant over the wall. So yep. uh, certainly looks very, very skillful of H2K to pick up and uh, is a good way of starting this game out for themselves. Oh, they've had tabs on Wisdom, pardon the pun, uh, pretty much consistently, though, throughout this game because they keep on moving into that jungle when he's occupied elsewhere. And you can see where the vision focus is. Wisdom up on the top side has been placed in some wards. The rest of Origin have followed suit. They have that side of the river, but the Dragon side, it's all H2K. Yeah, Dragon side is H2K. There are a couple of wards still around that uh, will deny H2K from doing anything particularly strong too early on. Interesting as uh, Wisdom heads into the bottom lane. Oh, oh the Ash gets arrow the arrow. Nuclear, the flash in! That might have been overkill there, and Wisdom picks up a kill for himself. And you could see there wouldn't really have been any response from Odo Amni there because he's right next to Sartorius in the top side. A lot of people will be questioning why was there no shield, no summoners used as soon as that arrow hits. Nuclear is dead, dead, dead in that bottom lane. So they save the summoners for another day. Yeah, Nehun now is going to be in a 1v2 situation. Powers unleashed. Jankos actually bails out. He was feeling the heat of the tower as Nehun melted through the minion wave. Feverman doesn't have damage yet. Look at his boots. Their Mercury treads as a first buy on Syndra, wanting to survive through some of the damage that Ryze has. Typically, Ryze wants to scale, but he has a fair amount of damage at the same time. Febovan being less about carrying for the team for himself now, being more about setting up fights later. And speaking of setting up fights, gets the knockup. Arrow hits, no response from H2K. Great response in the bottom lane out of Origin. Yeah, it was well played from them. They did invest two flashes to make it happen. I like the one from Wisdom. I don't know if the one from Heva was 100% necessary, to be completely honest, but it does fit his MO. If there's he's somebody aggressive. to kill, he's going in. <laughs> he's aggressive. The number of times I've seen him Q-flash people on, Am on Alistair again and again and again, just in the laning phase, and get kills in Challenger is insane. However, it doesn't work so much in the LCS. Or on and that's Karma. where I want to see Heva kind of round himself out. Yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> yeah. calmer as well. It, I mean, it, I, yeah, sometimes there's some habits that just die hard. Now, H2K, uh, they've sent Che and Yankos kind of a roaming into this jungle to clear some wards out, place a few of their own. They are unfortunately spotted near the red pit, but Wisdom is nowhere to be found. He's up in top side. He's getting his counter jungle on, and there's just a forest of wards here now towards this bottom side. We could be in for, uh, well, I believe it was called a fiesta in the bot lane. <laughs> Yeah, it might, it might end up being a bit of a fiesta. I mean, you can see the evolved claws on Yankos. Febbifin wasn't spotted. He's, well, now they see Yankos. They know what's up. Obviously, Q evolution is the one that everybody's been going to first as, uh, you know, pick up on the Kha'Zix. Yeah, that damage. Gives you that cooldown on the Q decrease when you hit an isolated target. So you find somebody one-on-one -on -one and suddenly they die. Wonder where half their health went. Just about Nuclear and Che have been keeping Kiva and Tabs penned up in this bottom side. And even though the dive was sniffed out, still keeping the pressure on. Lost a little bit of farm. Tabs has still kept himself ahead of that. However, Gold Game is in Origin's favor overall, thanks to the equalizing kill that Wisdom was bringing. Nobody really interested in the Dragon either, and there's no rush. It is only a Cloud Drake. Not quite as critical as something like a Mountain or an Infernal. So. We could be in for a bit longer of a laning phase. Nahoon, however, is going to have to go on the run. Rune Prison, Febivin unleashes the power. He's down to low health, but he's got both summoners available. Flashes over, followed by Yanko's party portal. He can't take it. Febivin claims him. Claims the kill. It took a little longer because of the lack of damage for now from Febivin, but that kill will do it for him. Will allow him to continue his itemization now towards a little bit more damage. And you can see that just the Kha'Zix, the Cinder, that potential is enough. Ultimate was used by Nuclear, oh, yeah. just right. to try and get tabs out of the lane. Yeah, going back to that mid, this is what H2K's comp is built to do. You were saying it yourself in, in champion selection, they can get the assassinations off, if they can get the pressure in the early game, they can snowball their lead. But this is not a snowball. Right. This is a dead even game at 13 minutes. Origin should be happy with this. Origin, considering their composition, will be very happy with this. When you look at it, they've got a Maokai who needs a little bit of extra time, needs that first item with those boots, has the Rise, who is you know working his way towards his core. This is an acceptable position for Origin to be in for themselves. When they look at this game plan, what do we need? This is exactly it. Sure, they'd love to be ahead, but this is not a worry now for Origin. Yeah, I do like that Wisdom took the more aggressive track and kind of helped equalize a little bit on the gold on bottom. They didn't just sit back, play the passive game. As Che, speaking of sitting back, he uh, can't get too comfortable there. He got fired on, a lot of damage being dealt to him, and still a problem with Zyra is her relative squishiness to a lot of other supports. But you know what is also good for Zyra? It's when she can come over with a jungler and do dragon. Two people, because yes. your plants tank it up for so long, which is something that Origin have to be careful of. With this push now in the bottom lane, you can see Heaver recalled as well. There is this opening now for H2K to go back into the lower jungle. This is the third or fourth time we've seen this. Every time Heaver backs away, H2K go into the jungle, they get vision control, they get wards, and they try and take away as many of the camps as they can. There's a difference this time though. Wisdom is careful. actually here. Yankos is gonna smite oh. that real quick. He's got the blast plant. He's out. Yankos manages a nice little steal away from Wisdom. Won't have access to his red buff for a little while longer. It was a close one. Wisdom was there. He was gonna check the brush this time. Didn't quite get a read on exactly how far away Yankos went, so didn't want to end up caught out for a second time. That was the first blood in this game, of course. HUK jumping the wall and getting the three versus one on Heva. They're living in this jungle right now. Yankos and Febivin are keeping the pressure on, dragging Nehun out of lane as well, uh, who just wants to sit there and scale and farm up as best he can. Febivin will soon have a little bit more damage. He has the Morello Nomicon completed for himself, but you're right, the boots, the survivability has been kind of in the back of his mind that he doesn't have to be this big carry that we saw when he made a name for himself on 2015's Fnatic. Exactly, and I think when he looks around, he sees Odo Amne, he sees Yankos, Nuclear, Che, he's like, oh, okay, maybe I don't need to carry every single game. So it might be a slight mindset change. I mean, it's not too uncharacteristic to pick up the Merc Treads as well. We'll either see that or, uh, you know, the Sork Boots come through. But uh, H2K right now are in a situation where they're trying to extend any kind of a lead they can over Origin because Syndra and Kha'Zix, if they don't get rolling, could very well get heavily outdamaged by this Rise and Ash later into the they're game. They're gonna try to get rolling. You see that Hawkshot go, and all of a sudden there's a Kha'Zix there. Oh, of course there's a Kha'Zix there. He's not left the entire time. This is going to be the first Tower of Blood. They finally finished the job, and you could see Wisdom and Nehun were looking to try and stop that, but they were just too late. And that's important, because Nuclear had been pushing that out again and again, and we mentioned them going into the jungle, putting down vision control, but the true 
success of pushing the lane out like that is getting that tower first blood on the bottom side. This unlocks a lot of the rest of the map. You'll see Nuclear likely go up towards the top lane or the mid lane right now. And then Odo Amne will change around and end up where he's needed on the map. Keep in mind, both teleports available. Neither top laner has used them in an aggressive stance yet. But look at it, Sartorius. First item has been completed. He's getting towards the time where he wants to be involved in a fight. Mm-hmm. Has plenty of sustain available for himself as well. Well, Satorius hasn't had too much trouble farming. Obviously, it's to be expected against something like a Shen who can't really stop you from doing it. But this is why Maokai has just been so heavily picked on 7.1. He just does everything very, very well, even compared to some of his other, you know, top tier level tanks. Um, but I really like this Shen pickup. If H2K can start utilizing that Stand United, if they can force the issue a little bit more, it's harder to do in the long lane down bottom, but maybe now's the time to try and focus on Nehun and shut him down. Yeah, if they can shut Nahun out of the game, that would go a long way. The problem is he's uh, at 170 CS at 17 minutes, but here they try. Yeah, okay, Exhaust is on, and Febbiman thinks better of it this time. It does seem oh, like they keep thinking through. they can go, but they pull the trigger a little slow. I mean, at this point, Rise, 170 farm, Rod of Ages completed with a Negatron Cloak and Mercury Treads as well. Syndra that started Merc Treads and only has a Morellonomicon is never going to get that kill without a significant amount of help from Yankos and the rest of the team. Now the rest of the team are around. They can't quite land the damage down through the bottom side jungle. So H2K having a little trouble getting a lot of their damage into useful positions. You can see that they really want to try to pick up this Cloud Drake, a little bit of extra speed to help them get in position a little faster, but OG are wise to this. They know there's nothing else for them to take on the bottom side of the map right now. They move in, they throw the wards down inside the pit, just outside the pit, and it's frustrating to watch for H2K. Mm. They can't really get what they need to do done, and they know there's a timer on this game. Yeah, they absolutely do. I mean, a lot of analysts and you know coaches will probably look at this and say, Maokai and Ryze, how did you get such a ticking time bomb composition that at one point Maokai and Ryze will 2v5 the entire enemy team as long as somebody sets them up for a fight? Like, this is the kind of composition that we very rarely see the two champions ever get through together. So Origin, from the draft, I was questioning the Zyra, perhaps it's H2K questioning this top and mid lane allowance that gets through that we really should be looking at. Because this Maokai came out late, remember? It was in phase two of the picks. Absolutely. And, I mean, so was the Zyra, but it really was a massive surprise towards the back half of that. And, you know, teams are still adjusting to this new pick ban format. Yankos is coming out of there. Ooh, the taunt does not land onto Satorius, who plays it safe. Meanwhile, Wisdom will be up there in the top and getting a little bit of farm for himself. Che, trying to dodge away. The Dragon will do a little bit more damage to him. But Origin are in a place that they really like. And to be honest, to come in with, you know, expectations of being one of the last place teams in your group, if not the entire LCS, to be able to hold out like this against one of the best teams from last year is impressive. And at this point, we've got to look at how the pace of the game is being affected by the neutral objectives available. Uh, Cloud Drake as a priority for H2K is fairly low. If this was an Infernal or a Mountain, they would probably have rushed to get that significantly earlier with the pressure they were creating in the bot lane. The fact that it's Cloud Drake means that Drake is just sat there and Yankos is just trying to farm and he's trying to outfarm a Rek'Sai who is faster around the map to get from camp to camp. And this Rek'Sai is getting particularly strong as well. You can see Wisdom very heavily farmed right now. A 125 to 78 is a fair disparity. It doesn't actually end up with too much gold, but the Rek'Sai herself is fairly healthy in the game right now. Yeah, I mean, it's definitely a big thing for Origin that they haven't been too far set back by a couple of the early plays that H2K were able to pull. And they're running out of options. They really are. The Essence Reaver is complete now on nuclear, so he has a little bit more to work with in terms of CDR. But, you know, they need to get in the mid lane and start trying to shut down Nahun if they really want to get much done. But they need AD to do it. With all that MR he's been stacking up, it is really hard, as you said, for Febivin to get involved and kill him. And not only that, like, Nahun just walks up to the wave, pushes it out, walks away. It doesn't really matter to him that people are trying to dive him because he'll survive that wisdom. Ooh, trades with Yankos. Yeah, he does. Now, wisdom is going Ooh. to just barely make it out of Live powers unleashed on Heva and Febivin gets a consolation prize. Now they're on to mid lane, and let's see if they have the minions to do it. It doesn't look like it. H2K stretching themselves to try and get as much damage down as they can. Yankos will uh, try and heal back up from his void spikes 
on the Rift Scuttler and then take the fruit as well so that he's healthy enough. But that was a hard-worked pick onto Heva. Heva opened himself up, and of course, Feberman now with a Void Staff on top of it, looking to just smash through. Here comes Yankos oh, from the, the side. Chains, and they're bringing Shen to the party. Nehun, this is who they wanted. Odo gets the taunt. Odo finishes the kill. Che, tanking tower, Satorius, twisted advance into nuclear. They want to push him off this tower. Nuclear is not going to live, or is he flashing? Satorius picking up the kill, and Odo trying to tank the line, but he finds himself in between all the remaining members of Origin, and they're firing him down. Chains on. He Heva's there, the rest of the team finishes him. Che and Febivin limping back as Yankos was way out of there. That did not go the way H2K wanted on the back half. It is a one for two trade against them. H2K running out of damage before Sartorius really appears. And you can see that Maokai is the difference maker in this. The TP in, now Origin are the ones that despite having their tower sieged for a little while, are the ones that are taking mid tower first. This is a real misplay out of H2K to stick around in the mid lane and allow themselves to get TP'd on by Sartorius. Sartorius shows up, deals with everything they needed to. Just about dead even on the gold right now as they polish off that tower to equalize 22 minutes into this game. And if you're H2K, you gotta be thinking, what the hell happened? I mean, Yankos was expecting to trade with Wisdom and doesn't realize that Wisdom is at least even on him here. And at this point, Feberman couldn't get quite around the corner, finally lands the damage down onto Heaver and takes him out. But Heaver joins into the second phase of this fight. This is how long this fight actually ended up going for because the wave clear from Tabs, from Nation is significant enough to force this phase to come too late. H2K push up, Yankos tries the submarine, they land the Chains of Corruption, but Nahum survives for so long. Again, this rise isn't so weak that you can just dive him. And in comes Satorius, 2v4 with Wisdom for a very long time in this, but the health bars on H2K are already chunked down. That Satorius walks into the fight, says, hey, I'm Mauka, you're never going to be able to deal with me. And Origin end up coming out so far ahead from that play, at least when you look at it in an isolated chamber. They got the tower from mid lane. Yep, and H2K looking to try and answer on the mid. We'll take a look at the damage that was dealt in the last fight. You can see the Kha'Zix just didn't have an impact, and that was because he was tanking <laughs> tower. Every time you saw him in the replay, he's trying to go on Wisdom again. They just weren't able to get involved after that initial delivery of Odo Omne. The same could be said for Nation. Zero damage in that fight. Well, he, he died was the really one that, early, to be he fair. He was the one that got dived initially on that play. It was He even died first into Nation in the second phase. So if that Rise is able to get damage off, we've seen it start to be significant already. So if that fight happens again and Nation is able to get anything off, it's a little worrying for H2K. I, I think it's fair to say it's uh, it's a lot worrying at this point. 24 minutes into this game, and we talked about the ticking timer, and you have to think on Origin's side, they have so much power, and they have been playing pretty impressively together. Few mistakes here and there. Heva going a little aggressive. Okay, that's what he does, we know. Wisdom has been playing it just fine. He's been escaping with his life when it's come down to it. He's picked back up the early farm game. Satorius has done exactly what he needed to. I mean, this does not quite look like the crew of B-tier players that they've been billed as. For now, yeah, that's that's fair to say that hanging with H2K fairly well in this uh, part of the game. I think H2K right now, their comp is hindering themselves a little bit. They should... In oh, boy. Oh, Che. Oh, boy. Okay, so Che's got the shields on. Nahum's gonna have to run out of there. Wisdom is gonna try to finish, but the chains were on him. Origin got a little hyphy, and H2K punished there. Well, you had to curse it, Pyra. <laughs> Speaking about Origin Every not making mistakes, time, right? H2K, they were on the top side of the map, and from what looked like a bad situation, Sartorius with a little bit of an error that we've seen time and time again from Challenger players. Bot side, staying there with no TP. This oh. Baron, Yankos is low. He got it. Oh, he's, he's gonna be secured. It. Okay, there was no smite fight possibility, but they're blinking health bars still. H2K uh, sensed a moment of weakness to be able to collapse on and therefore grab themselves a Baron. That's a big swing in their favor and a big mistake out of Origin that you know moves the gold 3K in H2K's direction. It's a two-part mistake. Satorius should not be showing bot side with no teleport when you know he TP'd and it's on cooldown. And at the same time, Origin shouldn't be pushing forward with Wisdom on the top side of the map when Satorius is bot side with no TP. Like, that is a fairly easy mistake that a lot of teams will make, and a team like H2K seemingly will punish it time and time again. Yeah, well, there's definitely something to be said for, you know, teams that have a little bit of anti-momentum when they get a little bit ahead, when they get a lot ahead, and they think, ah, it's okay, we're in the lead right now, we're cruising to a victory. Uh, you lose your head sometimes, and that's just not the way to play a game. 
So unfortunately for OG, H2K were able to punish that in a big, big way, and now they're getting themselves a 1-3-1 one, one on. Well, more of a 4-1 and one because the rest of H2K have come up topside. Hawkshot's going to spot Yankos and Che, but this tower is going to be polished off real soon as nuclear is hurting the Baron and Powered Minions into it. Odo is pushing bot side out as well, holding Satorius down there. And H2K, uh, well, from what looked like a rough position from them, Origin were in a good spot, and now H2K have turned the entire game around. This is the biggest difference between the teams we've seen all game long, and this Baron is going to crack open the Origin outer towers at least. Yep, this will be number four for them, and you can still see Odawamne trying to peck away at the one in the bottom lane, so there really isn't a whole lot left here. Origin still trying to defend now. The big question for HDK is, is this lead that they built themselves now going to be enough for them to close it out? It needs to be more. They need more from this Baron buff. They need a really large advantage for themselves to offset the fact that Maokai and Rise and... Oh, wow, Heva! Yep, they go right for him. They know it's the easiest target, and Yankos unfortunately taking tower shots, dodging away the Ash Arrow, but Wisdom shuts him down with a flash on Burrow. And now Che and Nuclear and Febovit trying to make the most of this, finishing off the tower, unleashing the power, and they got the chains on oh, today. They, they, they get him here. He's just able to flash away into tower range. Wisdom body blocking everything they can, but this is going to be an inhibitor turret here. Tabs trying to keep them off it. Satorius got a twisted advance in, but they just keep pushing for the tower. It doesn't even matter. Satorius might not die, but they can't defend. So another tower taken. H2K swings it six to one now. And H2K in the second phase of that fight did not care about Satorius and Tabs alone. They take down that tower. Had Naken been there, it would have been a different story. But this was the start. Che over the wall, catches out Heva. Again, that's the kind of position you have to be careful of around Azira. She will use the roots over the wall. Tabs doesn't quite hit the arrow, but it didn't really matter as Yankos fell anyway. And in phase two, Na Naken was caught out by nuclear Zolt, shipped down, forced back to the base, and the tower died before he could realm warp his way back into the fight. Yeah, looked like Satorius was able to stop Odawamne from uh, channeling his Stand United 100%, though, and that allowed them to shut down Yankos. So they got a little bit back for it. Heva! Oh, boy. Okay, got to be careful there. Odawamne, Nehun both here. The flash taunt lands at the last possible second, and even with the shields, they were nearly polished off. Clutch Realm Warp out of Nehun. Yeah, going, going, gone from that skirmish, but gone is the ultimate from Nehun that would take Satorius and Rise into the back lane, uh, the back side of the fight, at least. We've seen it happen a couple of times. Febovin knows that somebody's around as Wisdom was in the bush. So this, again, is HUK trying to force them back. Oduamne will have his ultimate available soon. His teleport is up as well. And the second dragon of the game has been started by H2K. It's a decent lead for themselves right now after the Baron buff has expired. It's not enough to say this game is done and dusted. This Rise, this Maokai combination with the Rek'Sai and the Engage potential coming from Origin still has a lot of potency as we head later and later into this game. But talking about potency, we really have to look to Febivin now because it looked like he was going to take a much more supporting role in this game. Well, I mean, he's sitting himself at a pretty three items with 3-0-2 on the board, so this is already starting to look a lot better for the H2K mid laner. Oh, it's looking uh, better, especially considering the... Uh... Oh, hang on, Nuclear yeah. goes in. Ooh, that's a swing and a miss, but Yankos comes in with a submarine. They've invested heavily to take down Taps. They get him, but there's no minions here to push. There may be a timing window here that Origin can push with, but... H2K are shoving their weight around. Yeah, Origin are actually pinging mid-tower, trying to trade mid-inner in exchange, as Nagian will be able to clear this wave fairly quickly. They haven't backed yet. I mean, it's only Yankos that's gone back. Now, can I mean, he defend H here? H2K will be able to push the inhibitor tower way faster if Origin don't react in that oh, mid boy. lane. Oh, man. They're they still late chicken. to this. Odo can tank this up for a while. This was a big mistake. Origin got cold feet at the last moment, and now they lose not only one, but two towers here. Wisdom getting taunted, getting knocked back, the big Zyra ultimate, the big one out of Febivin. Wisdom inches away right now from death. Here comes and there's Nehun. an open Nexus turret, or inhibitor, I should say. Nehun coming in, but they got the jump on him. Great they taking turn. him down. Oda Wamne with the finisher. Nuclear, he should fall here, but Satorius might just trade his life. The Guardian Angel is popped, and he's going to go down a second time. Wisdom, Heva, Tabs trying to get involved, but they just can't do a thing. Yankos hopping over, finding Wisdom, gone in Viz, and they're right back on to the inhibitor, and there's an open one in mid. A very precarious, uh, precarious situation out of H2K in that bot side as Ryze was coming down they had to turn on him and turn on him they did stun him down from Fenevuven 
clean out the rest of his health bar, and Nahion could not survive. And that has really been the story of this game. At these pivotal moments, H2K have found Nahion and taken him out of fights before he's been able to wreck the H2K backline. Let's take a look at how it all began again. We knew Nahion was on the way, but it was just too late. It's a matter of time here. You just see him Realm walk down into the lower side of the jungle, and H2K, look at how low their health bars are. They force out early heals, everything to try and keep Nahion down. The stun lands, they have the control ward to see him coming, and everything connected out of H2K that they needed it to on Rise. Otherwise, that was a real tough spot to get themselves out of. They take out Maokai to finish it off after the Guardian Angel, and now H2K are in a dominant position. Yeah, Yankos himself is finding a lot of solace in the fact that he is just nice and fed this time around, has a bit more survivability, the Maw of Malmortius, he has the Edge of Night for himself. The, assassina the assassination potential has turned into full-on blow teams up potential for this entire squad. This is looking really good if H2K can keep the pressure on. And in the last 32 minutes of gameplay, We've talked about Forbidden low damage early, Ryze would have late game damage, everything should be all right for Origin if they get to this stage. Well, Febivan has done over 20,000 damage, Nahian has barely done 6,000 damage in 32 minutes of play as Ryze. Oh no. Typically, Ryze starts putting out monster numbers. Yeah, well, it's also going to be Kha'Zix putting out monster numbers right now as he does get stopped up for just a second, Ash Arrow goes, but they've caught Nahian once again, power's unleashed on him, they can't get the stun out, Origin might just be able to get back, but look at the bottom, Oduwamne is pushing on Nexus turrets. Not only that, they forced the Rise out of the fight as well and turn for the Baron. Oduwamne, yes, he's creating presence, but Nahian again is not getting damage out in any of these fights. He is unable to stay alive long enough to turn the damage back around. Yeah. Big difference between these two mid laners, and a lot of experience on Febivan's side definitely coming to play for him as H2K secure themselves another Baron as we hit 33 minutes into this game. It is a 9,000 gold edge, eight towers to two. Origin are bleeding out. They really are. They need a significant hold here with two inhibitors down. They need one good fight where Nahion doesn't die, but now he's got no Flash Pyro. He cannot get away the next time that that happens. He hasn't got anything to get himself out of a tricky situation. The Seraph's Embrace is on cooldown. No further defensive activatable items for the Rise. He is alone, basically, unless his team are completely with him throughout the fight. Nahion has it all on his shoulders. They're gonna need the perfect engage, or rather the perfect counter engage here to try and make something happen, but Yankos is already pushing on Wisdom. If they get caught out and lose a member, it's gonna be nigh impossible to defend their base here. As you can see, on three fronts, H2K is pushing. Baron and Power Minions all the way through. And the items have come out in response as well. QSS for Nuclear, Edge of Night comes out for Yankos. They've tried to cut through the healing with a mortal reminder. They've got a second Executioner's Calling as well. Everything is trying to slow down the regenerative effects that Origin have across the board there. They're trying to cut through the tanks, cut through everything, and end this game as quickly as they can. Yeah, they just don't care at this point on H2K's side. You finish off that in That's fine, we're just got it, doesn't matter. And now it's Nexus turrets, super minions, and a desperate pushback. Satorius, poor guy, has been locked up right in front of this turret, desperately trying to save it. And Odo can just dance around him constantly. This is the end game for H2K if they can finish it. However, Che is caught. They get the ultimate out of Odo. Wamne, Wisdom gone in, but it doesn't matter. Nuclear will finish him off. Oh, Yankos, going no, he's going to fall. And Nehun right after him, but it is blow for blow. Two kills for two. Odo Wamne not nailing the taunt, but they still got Heva in the end. Nuclear finishes the job, and it's all on Tabs and Satorius to hold back this push. Yeah, they cannot hold it back. Tabs left alive. Satorius came back to try and defend him, and Origin reached a little too far trying to kill Che in that exchange, and H2K Kill the Nexus. Game over at 35 minutes in. H2K finish the job. Game one of the 2017 Spring Split for EU done, and it's H2K off to a slow start, but it's a victory at the end. Indeed it is, and that's what matters, is to get that W on the board, but holy moly, they gave a few heart attacks at the beginning. It looked like Origin could have taken that one. Some really... Uh, you know, cool and interesting plays out of H2K and Origin to start this out. The catches from Che were pretty good. Um, Heva was trying to ward time and time again, couldn't quite stay alive. This game was big in the early game. It, it was. It was a nice change to see. I think there were a lot more blind engages in the previous seasons, but uh, it really was like a, a game of chess to watch people just moving around the map, in and out of each other's junglers. 
And I like the comp that Origin had. <laughs> like I like I love the Maokai, the, well, especially the rise as well. But the way they were trying to, you know, set up fights, stick around, they just never felt like they were able to get fights done. Apart from the one where Satorius TP'd into in the mid lane, that was probably one of the better executed fights out of Origin, but still Nation was dead before that fight ever started. Great setup, no damage. Yeah, uh, it, it does seem that like HDK kind of like figured a way around the rise problem. Just kill him. Just, can't do anything. Yeah, just kill the rise. Um, that you know. That always works, I guess. <laughs> if you can pull it off. The hard part's always doing it. But HGK managed it time and time again. Now, they've taken game number one over Origin.